A Taste of Armageddon. I am continuing my review of every Star Trek episode from the original series, the best series, my second favorite TV show of all time. Uh, I don't have my notes around anywhere. How am I going to discuss this? Well, we're going to use my space system, story, pacing, artistry, characters, enjoyment. Each category gets a score between zero and two. So two is the best you can get in any category. Well, I don't have my notes. How will I ever? Well, this one's very easy to review. <laughs> uh, the storyline is going to get a two out of two. So a perfect score for the storyline. If I give the storyline a zero, that means it's bad. If I give it a one, that means it's good. If I give it a two, that means it's amazing. It's better than amazing. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. This is just like a bloody masterpiece to, to, to tell you. Like one of the best, this is like, an, let's say it's 50 minutes or something. I don't remember the exact time. It's gonna be like one of the best hours you spend on TV, <clears throat> watching TV. Um, if anyone says, oh, TV's not good for you or whatever, remember that back when you were a kid, you should have said, oh yeah, TV's not good for me? Watch this shit and then put that on and then you put your VHS tape in or whatever. It's like, <clears throat> the, the uh, they, they land, so the, the Enterprise lands, <clears throat> uh, they're trying to do diplomatic relations with this um, uh, uh, species. Again, I don't, I, I I don't I, I'm a star, I'm a Star Trek fan. I've seen every episode maybe four or five times. I'm not like a super nerd. I don't remember all of the 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 the, the, the races, the planets. Like I can't you know I can't pause the screen and be like oh that's from this episode. I don't remember you know. So I'm just giving it to you as a very I don't want to say casual Star Trek fan because I bought toys and stuff too. Um, so I do love Star Trek, but I haven't seen it enough times to memorize the hell out of it. So I'm just giving you the story very basically. They get there, they're in a war. These two planets are in a war with each other. They land and they're like, well, what the hell's going on? I don't see any battles and Spock, you know, check the readings. It's like, no, I don't know. It's like, everything looks good. And they're like, yeah, well, it's all fought with computers. So you're like, oh, okay. It's kind of like the video game or the board game battleship. It's like, okay, you move here, you sunk my battleship. It's like, oh, okay. Except that in this one, the people do die. So if you've been hit by a fake missile, then you just walk into this disintegration room and you just get disintegrated. So it's like, oh, John, darn, looks like you're a casualty of war. Oh, man, dude, that sucks. I wanted to play D&D &D tonight. Well, so we'll have to play without you. And then you just get disintegrated. And they're kind of appalled by this. And actually, I, I mean, I was just so, you're like, okay. And the guy tries to explain, he's like, well, you know, do you really want a real war? Do you want destruction and pain and suffering and, 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 and like the culture gets destroyed and civilization could be destroyed. And Kirk's like, yeah, but that is what makes war undesirable. Uh, oh, so good. Like, I, I, I can't even, like, I can't, I can't explain how awesome this is in like a five minute video. I can't even really explain it in like a 20 minute video. I would need to run this episode with commentary probably a couple times. Like I'd have to watch the episode and give you a commentary while we're watching it to tell you how every damn thing that happens is awesome. But then I'd have to, I'd probably, there'd be too many awesome things to say, so we'd have to repeat the episode. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. This is just one of the best things on television that there's ever been. <laughs> uh, I love this episode, obviously. Um, so, gee, where's this review going? Uh, the pacing, well, I guess I'm going to give the pacing a two out of two because uh, I am not bored for one second of this awesome episode. Um, the artistry, well, I'm just going to give this a two out of two, aren't I? Um, I do want to point out that I'm watching the upgraded Blu-rays of this. Uh, some of them upgrades on some of the other episodes are friggin' really cool. This one, they made the city look really nice. You do have the option. You can go back and watch the normal one. And even the normal version is still Blu-ray and very good quality. So they're both excellent quality. I figure, you know, they put this work into upgrading it. Let's just watch the upgraded ones. They didn't pull a Star Wars and, you know, have like you know, 17, you know, sand crawlers or whatever. And it's, it's just like, they just upgraded kind of what was there, right? Um, so everything looks great, music's good. I like the costumes of those guys. Um, the computer's good. I like how, how like, like that, there's that computer room. It's like, okay, this computer does this. And like, they thought this through. It's, it wasn't just like a box. It's like, oh, this computer is a defensive computer. This one plots the, the, the missiles, whatever. This one kind of coordinates attacks. So I like that. That's cool. Everything looks good. Uh, there's quarters. They got the disintegration machine. I like the. I actually like the weapons. <clears throat> I like that the weapons fire 
I'm not, again, I don't remember if they changed this, but the weapons don't actually fire a beam. It's more like a disruptor almost, or like some sort of, I think it, they said it was like some sort of sonic weapon. Kind of neat. <clears throat> um, uh, Scotty and, Char oh, I'll get to characters. Characters, two out of two, everyone is on fire in this episode. Um, I even like the diplomat guy. Uh, look, he was just there. So so the, the kind of the a-hole character is the diplomat guy. who's like, look, well, this is a mission. We're supposed to make peace with these guys. Blah, blah, blah. And, and Scotty's like, yeah, I'm not lowering the shields. <laughs> Scotty, Scotty's awesome in this. He's like, yeah, that, that, that's not happening. He's like, just because some mealy mouth guy says it. And the other thing, too, is that the doctor's like, yo, they faked messages from the captain. Like, this isn't a misunderstanding. Oh, it's a misunderstanding. Oh, you're, you're, everything's fine. Beam down right now. It's like, no, I'm not doing I'm not doing that. They fake messages from the captain. That's not a misunderstanding. So they're great. Um, the diplomat guy is good because at the end, he's like, look, I'm going to try to stay and make peace. Um, I thought he was a good character. Like, you might watch him and be like, oh, this is the the, the a-hole federation, you know, suit who comes in and thinks he's... Inter but, you know, the guy was, had a job to do. So I thought he was pretty good. Uh, Scotty obviously is friggin' on fire in this episode. He's the Tempest. McCoy is great, too, with his few parts that he has. Uh, Spock and Kirk are amazing, of course. Uh, um, they always are. All the characters are always good. The characters are always going to be good. Usually every uh, uh, character score is 1.5, uh, unless I... or 2. It's usually a 2, but if I hate the supporting characters, a lot of the times the character section is going to come down to the, the villain of the of the show, or like the extra side characters that come on because the main crew is the best crew, like hundred um, percent. Look, I love, I actually love Deep Space Nine and I, and I love Voyager. I love both those shows. I know people, some people are not keen on them as much. Um, and I like majority of the cast on both of those shows, but original series, like everyone is the damn best. Like if you said, oh yeah, my favorite character is Scotty, I would be like, oh yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Like I wouldn't be like, Scotty, are you, uh, what? You know, like, no, my favorite character is Spock. My wife is Kirk. I like them all. They're all pretty. I mean, I guess Kirk, Spock, it's for me, are the the two best. But I'd say like McCoy, Scotty are like pretty damn awesome. Like they're tied up there. McCoy might even go up to the top rankings. Like it's 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 tough. Like I think even Yuhura is awesome to be honest. She's, she's kind of cool and she's very confident in her job. Every time Kirk says, "I'll oh, do this," and she's like, "Yeah, I, I tried that." You know, it's like, oh, okay. Well, have you tried this? Like, yes, Captain, I've tried that. It's like, no response. Like, oh, okay. Like she, there's never a point where she's like, oh yeah, I never thought of that, Captain, because I'm a moron. Like she's always like, yep, I'm on top of stuff. So she's great too. Sulu's, oh, I like Sulu as well. Chekhov hasn't appeared yet, so we'll get to him later. Um, but yeah, anyway. So two out of two for characters, obviously the enjoyment factor is two out of two. Like, I mean, this is 10 out of 10. Like, was there even a doubt in anyone's mind that this wasn't 10 out of 10? This represents for me, some of the best Star Trek stuff. There's uh, there's another couple of episodes coming up that I'm going to do. They're, they're also amazing. For me, a perfect Star Trek episode is going to be all of the characters have some little thing to do or some purpose to exist in this episode. So this, except McCoy's slightly lower, but everything else, like all of that else checks, checks out. Um, has to be like, look, they got to find an alien planet or something. Right? Like, what the hell are we watching this for? Um, I, I do like ones that are just on the ship. If an alien comes to the ship, that's acceptable as well. So an alien presence. So either um, an alien comes onto the ship or they go to the planet. I usually prefer go to the planet. Again, Star Trek's my second favorite show. So I'm not, I'm not nitpicking anything. I'm just telling you for me, perfect perfection is they go to another planet, meet some kind of alien. Then of course, there's a problem to solve that can be discussed and solved. So those are your sort of your three points that you need. This one's got all of that um, for me. Look, these alien guys, I'm not pissed off at them either. They legitimately thought, well, yeah, we're saving our culture. We're, we're saving the property damage and all that. But Kirk is just like his and his entire discussion about this war and everything is so amazing. He's like, yeah, so, okay, so we're barbarians and all that. But maybe today we're not going to kill. We can decide that right now we're not going to kill right now today. You do that every day and all of a sudden you're fine, right? Um, and yeah, the whole concept of fighting this war with the computers and it's like, oh, well, shit. Yeah, I guess you're just getting disintegrated. It's like, well, I'm not doing that, right? Like you got to think and there's probably laws and th then they got to enforce that you're going to get killed. So they're actually fighting themselves more than the enemy because they're enforcing people to go or they're forcing people to go into those chambers. You're like, oh, okay, oh, it's a great episode. It's so good. 
Let me know in the comments, man, what you think about this one. This, this one's killer. Uh, check out my friend Clobber in Time's channel. He does a Saturday Night Star Trek with him and his crew, and they're awesome. Uh, they go through every episode and really in details, like, you know, spending a long time on every episode, not just me doing a fun. Well, this is a 10-minute video. Sorry, I love this one so much. You find that the ones, things that I don't like videos are long and things that I like, they're long. It's weird. Uh, but anyways, love this episode. Check out my buddy's channel. The link is in the description. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe. That's it, everybody. Until next time.